there's something that nobody tells you about chipping onto the green. And without knowing this, you're gonna be making the same mistakes I'm doing right now on all of these chip shots. But you know what? If you focus on this, I promise you, you're gonna to start to strike the shots much, much more consistently and be able to control that distance wherever you are around the green. I'm gonna show you how to do this in just three very simple steps. So step number one, if there's one secret to consistent chipping, it is using the bounce of the club. Now, a lot of people have heard of the concept, but they don't fully understand it. So let me explain. I'll show you how it helps you in a second, but this is bounce. If you take your club and I get it vertically upwards here, can you see at my leading edge here and the base of the club, the leading edge is slightly higher. This degree here, if I draw a line here, is actually 10 degrees on mine. It's actually printed on my Callaway Jaws wedge here, 10 degrees. Now this is super, super important. Now you need to know what bounce you have on your golf club as you go in to hit your shots. It's super important, I'll explain in a second, but come and have a look at how this bounce is gonna help you. So your ability to look after the bounce on your golf club is paramount to great chipping. So look at this. So when I set that club up here with a shaft that's vertical, you can see that that leading edge is off the ground and the bounce is on, uh, on the ground. This is gonna help me glide through this surface. If I didn't have much bounce on there and I start to take that bounce off, suddenly now, look, the leading edge is gonna dig in. That's your fat shot. Okay, now if I take add, so I've got 10 degrees of bounce on this. If I start to add too much bounce now, look at what's going to happen now. The leading edge is too high. That's your thin shot, right? So, your job, and this is what we're going to show you in step one, is to look after the bounce. Now, the first way we do this is this, and this is massive. So, you know what bounce now, degree of bounce you have on your wedge. Your job now is this are you keeping it at setup? And this is massive. You do this, you're almost 90% of the way there to great struck uh, chip shots. So, I've got like I said, 50 degree wedge I'm using at the moment with 10 degrees of bounce. Why? I've got a lot of green to work with here. Now, here's how I first of all want you to keep the bounce on. Chipping is not a miniature version of the full swing. It's completely different. It's a completely different action, all right? So the first thing we do is this. We don't have a big wide stance. We have a narrow stance, okay? Why do we have a really narrow stance? Well, if you've got a wide stance, you end up having too much movement, okay? This is gonna affect where the club bottoms out. It's too inconsistent. It can create lots of shaft lean, taking that bounce off. So we have a stance for a basic chip shot like this of about a club width apart. The next thing I want you to do to look after that balance is look, get nice and close. Now what this does is super cool. When you get close in on the shot, come and have a look at this. What happens is the heel actually comes off the ground. Now I created a detailed video on this in this top, I'll put it in the top right hand corner at some stage, but the heel comes off the ground and really helps you use that bounce. Now from there, what we do is this. When you stand close, another cool thing happens. The shaft gets more vertical, yeah? On a more powerful shot, it's down here, but a more vertical shot, it helps the club travel on a much straighter line, so it helps it be more, much more accurate. But not only that, watch this. When you start to look at my wrists here, my wrists are starting to kind of arch upwards. When the wrists arch upwards, it eliminates a lot of wrist action on the way back and on the way through. Again, think of it. We've got 10 degrees of bounce on this club. If I have lots of wrist action here on a basic chip shot, and I keep that wrist action, I've suddenly added loads of, I've taken all that bounce away and I'm lighting you know, out to dig into the ground, or I'm gonna to have to somehow do this on the way through. We don't want that on a basic chip shot. We wanna keep this really, really simple. So, stance, kind of a club width apart, arch those wrists up here. Now, the pressure here is on my lead foot. Very, very important. I'll put all this checklist down uh, in, in a column in a second, but pressure's on my left side. Now, when you put your pressure on this left side, please don't do this. What have you just seen? So many people put their weight forward, and now my shoulders look have gone on a severe tilt. This is gonna hugely affect the bounce and therefore the quality of your shot. As I lean backwards here, now suddenly look, I'm gonna start to strike the ground behind the golf ball, potentially even adding too much bounce. That is your thin, thin shot. Instead, do this. I want those shoulders to be much, much more level at setup. The simplest way I know to achieve this is to take the club, put my left hand below my right initially here. I learned this actually from Pete Cowan. This levels off your shoulders. Once you're there and you've got that sensation, weight over on this lead side, toe turned out a little bit here, then simply swap the hands around, almost trying to maintain the same position. 
one final checkpoint. We said 10 degrees of bounce we've got on this club and we wanna maintain it ideally at setup. If you have 10 degrees of bounce, but you have a shaft forward, that is now 20 or 12 or 13, even 13, what have you just done? You have taken 10 degrees, leaned it forward, and now suddenly you've created a dig. You have set yourself up to duff your chip shots. No matter how good a technique you've got, you're almost certainly gonna duff. So just be aware of that. You don't have to be perfect, but literally when you're setting up, make sure the shaft angle going forward here is just under the bounce on your wedge, all right? Now, let's move on to step two, and this one is huge. So, step number two. Are you maintaining the bounce through the actual shot? So, so many people don't do this. So, as you know, I've got, I'm using a 50 degree wedge here. I've got 10 degrees of bounce. Now, if I fat this ball, even with a great setup, now, you're 95% of the way there if you've done the setup, right? You really are. But sometimes you may still hit them bad because you somehow drive the handle forward and take that bounce away, causing the leading edge to kind of dig into the ground, or alternatively, somewhere on the line, you've added too much bounce, okay, and then you thin the ball. So let me show you some simple things that I do and I coach my players to do, which really improves the chances that you're gonna maintain that bounce all the way through the shot. So all I want you to do is this. So you can see we've eliminated some of the risk by getting the club much more vertical here. Now, what a great image I use here is to imagine that the club, when we're swinging it, okay, the club head, you're swinging it underneath, okay, basically the breakfast table, okay? So if you look at it here, look, I'm swinging the club head underneath the breakfast table. What I don't want here is excessive. You, if you kind of start to use a lot of wrists early on on a basic chip shot like this, you're gonna smack the breakfast table on the way back, and it, look at this, you'll smack it on the way through. So simple exercise here, swing the club head under the breakfast table. The other thing that you can do at this stage here as well is this. Notice when I finish, I swing the club head under the breakfast table, where's the butt end pointing at the end of my swing? Can you see? It's actually pointing at my left hip. If you have excessive drive of the hands, where's my butt pointing now? Way over here. If you're a flicker, where's it pointing? Way behind. So as you swing the club under the breakfast table here, just start to practice it backwards and forwards and point it at the left hip at the end of your swing. It will work an absolute treat. Listen to that sound, get a little bit of check now and release beautifully oh, out to the hole. So get the club, swing it under the breakfast table, point the club at your left hip as a guide. Now notice this, and this is a big one, okay? We're gonna move into step three. This only works if you do this and avoid this big mistake. Have a look. So step number three, and I've got a bonus tip at the end, so stay tuned, it's a real big one. So step number three is this. For that to work, okay, for that what we just said to work, you need to make sure that you realize that this is a, not a miniature version of your golf swing, okay, your full swing. In the full swing, you swing back, your legs drive forward, the hips open, and then you fire the arms through the shot. With short shots around the green, the legs and the body, they work in harmony together. Can you see how they are literally turning back and they're beautifully turning through together? This is how you create the consistency. So once you've got that beautiful setup here, I want you to look at my knees here. My knees are moving back, and as I come through, look, my knees move through with and in conjunction with my upper body. At no stage is there a drive or a separation, okay? So step number three, get yourself set here in follow the setup guidelines here, arch the wrists up, weight forward, not too much shaft lean, and when you're swinging, visualize that bounce, maintaining the same bounce all the way through this shot. Look, I'm not driving it, I'm maintaining the bounce, and I'm synchronizing the body back and through. Now, let's get into this big bonus tip. So here's the bonus tip, and I'm giving you this because it's all about distance control. It's one of my most asked questions. How do you get it? Most people, unfortunately, kind of don't get distance control, or strike for that matter, because they basically have taken their full swing and they're trying to even slow it down for these short shots. You're not gonna do that now because you've seen exactly how to create these shots perfectly. 
Instead, what I want you to do is this, to control distance. I don't want a very short backswing here, forcing you to accelerate on the way through. In fact, find rhythm. Don't be shy and letting that club go back a little bit further here, so you've got momentum just to allow the club to fall through the shot. If you've only got a very, very short swing and a, a fairly long way to go, you're gonna end up driving that kind of handle forward. That's gonna get that leading edge digging in, as, as we said. So find the rhythm in your stroke to match what we talked about here. So the legs and the torso can work in beautiful harmony, okay? All the way back and all the way through. That one's come up short, which might mean look, that's actually one more bonus tip. Let's have a look, that one's come up short. Let's have a quick bonus tip, number two, by grabbing a 9-9. I've got 50 degrees here. Did I, use, did I need to use that? Possibly not. If I took 9-9 here with all this green, doing exactly what we just talked about, watch this. Watch how easy this is. That is probably a better club for this distance, all right? So I hope you really loved this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, maybe we'll share it with your friend and do me a favor. If you wanna know how to play some of those shots around the roof, more importantly, how to maybe even pitch a shot, check this one out for the rough shots, this one out for pitching because it's slightly different in the technique. But until next week, have a great golfing week.